Right, my dudes, I hope you're doing well. Um, this video just covers our planning document so that if you need a little bit of help running through this after class, then uh, you can refer to this video and it breaks down everything that you need to do. So just to recap, in our document, we need to identify which characters will be speaking the lines of dialogue in your chosen reference scene. You're going to be outlining all of character A's moving parts in red, all of character B's moving parts in blue, and outline secondary element moving parts in green. You're also then going to list the 12 principles that you'll be using and where they will be applied, as well as provide a very basic storyboard that blocks out the movement that you have planned. Now this all sounds very intense, but I've done my best to make sure that the Photoshop file that I've given you as your template is as simple to work with as possible. So starting off, we've got a number of artboards in our file. If I zoom out here, you'll see we've got a few. The very first page is our title page. So this is where you're gonna put your name and class time as well as student number. Our second page is the dialogue breakdown. So this is where you're going to transcribe the dialogue. You're going to literally type out exactly what the character says. You can determine who's character A and who's character B and you can type on either side. I'll run you through that in a moment. Page three is our image breakdown. So this is where you're going to highlight the areas that are going to be moving. Say, for example, I want my female character to obviously move her mouth, maybe blink and interact with her eyebrows while she's expressing her point in dialogue, moving her head left and right, moving her body, hands, etc. Basically, this outline just serves as um, a guide, much like we had in our initial Photoshop uh, file, so that I could then cut out these areas and deep edge them accordingly. Then from page four onwards, this is the storyboard portion of the document. So we'll get to this in a moment. Now to edit page one, we simply need to come over to the layer. And I want you guys to please drag your layer panel out as far, well, not as far as you can to the left. It doesn't need to be the whole page, but drag it out quite far so that you can see the full title of the layer because I have given instructions or uh, descriptions on those layers. So for example, inside of our page one title, there is a text layer that is your name plus class time and it is editable. You'll see I've labeled it in green, which means that you need to interact with it. Some layers further down the line are in red, which means that you should not interact with them at all. So please follow those labels. Now to, simple, uh, to interact with this layer, it's quite simple. Um, simply grab your move tool, double click, on that text layer and then you can just type in your name if you can remember how to spell it unlike myself but I'm not going to spend more time on that and class time all day every day all right to lock it in don't hit enter because that's going to just extend the text line or it's going to try and type further in the text line you can either just click off of the layer or you can click on this little tick button at the top of your screen and that will lock that in all right, I'm just going to undo that so that uh, I don't mess up the document that I'm going to give you. All right, so you're going to give your name and class time there. On our second page, we have the dialogue breakdown. Now, I've given an example. So this is all fake text, essentially. And you'll see that we've got timestamps as well as the op uh, option to type in the dialogue for character A and then options for character B and timestamps there. Now, going into our layers, you'll see that there are a lot of editable layers here and then a couple that should not be touched at all. So the ones that shouldn't be touched is the framework. So that's just the, uh, the vertical lines and the horizontal breakers for the titles and then the headings for this page. So please don't mess with those. Now, as for the rest, let's say for example, you designate the character B as the person talking first. Simply just move this text over using your move tool by clicking and dragging it across and you can do the same for the timestamp as well kind of just placing it there all right to edit, uh, edit this text the exact same thing simply double click type in exactly what that character says so you'll type in their entire line of dialogue and you're going to give the timestamp so what time they begin speaking what time they finish speaking and this is measured in seconds and frames so it's going to be very detailed all right, I recommend that you import your audio option into After Effects, play it back, and then just type in the exact value that you see there. So if it's two seconds, 15 frames, you'll type in two seconds, 15 frames. All right, just as a, a little point of interest, 
this um, use of these little speech mark indicators are how we kind of break up seconds from frames. All right, so that's why they're there, just to show that these are seconds and those are frames. Now, if your character only speaks, let's say, one word, and uh, now we have all this excess space, all I need to do is just click the, um, actually, before I click the tick, while my words are selected, I can interact with this text box and shorten it if necessary. I could then click the tick, could reposition my timestamp, and then to move these lines, simply click on them and drag them upwards to reposition them. All right, alternatively, they can sometimes be difficult to click and drag. So just using your arrow keys, if you hold down shift and hit your up and down arrow key, it increases the uh, distance that that line travels and just shift it up accordingly. All right, I have also provided here at the bottom of our um, layer or inside of our character layer rather, uh, we've got the actual lines themselves. So if you have the layer selected, you'll be able to move it up and down. So if you can't click on it for whatever reason, just select the layer. And then I've also provided extra lines at the bottom of the page. All right, so these just sit here. I've turned their visibility off automatically so that we don't see those. But if you need extra dialogue lines, if you need to have more sort of rows or columns with your text, then you can simply just use these breakers over here bring them up to where you need them. If you need more dialogue boxes, so let's actually do this as an example. Let's say my character has spoken here and uh, another opportunity for the character line for let's say character B speaking here. In order to duplicate this text layer, I simply need to hold down Option or Alt. It's the same as in Illustrator. You'll see that as I hold down Option or Alt, I get that little double arrowhead figure. Clicking and dragging will create a duplicate of the text layer. So then let's say he responds. And then coming down to my bottom layers here, grabbing one of these extra lines that we have at the bottom. So let's say layer four, clicking and dragging it up and using my arrow keys just to position it. I can then obviously also duplicate my timestamp and place that there and uh, position the lines as necessary just to make space for that. And that's how you go about editing this page. All right. Once you're done with that, um, just make sure that you don't have these excess lines at the bottom visible. So right, to keep it nice and neat, just turn off anything that we don't need. Let's then move on to the image breakdown. Now the image breakdown, I've given an example as well as a key. So I've reminded you that character A needs to be in red, character B needs to be in blue, and secondary animation needs to be in green. All right, so whoever you determine to be character A, you don't have to type in their names or anything in the transcription. Just keep in mind it's either going to be X character or Y character, A and B. And that's what we refer to here by those colors. All right, now inside the image breakdown, there is an orange layer or a yellow layer called Jason's example, turn off visibility. So those are all of my lines. Please turn that off and then draw your own. So what you can do is I've made some empty layers for you. We've got character A outlines. You'll see that there's nothing on it, turning it on and off. Character B outlines and secondary outlines. All right, so character A, for example, you would then just hit B for brush, select your red color for that. And if your character is talking, I also recommend just setting your hardness to back up to 100% just so that we've got nice solid lines. So if the character is gonna be talking, I'll highlight her mouth. Um, if she's going to be blinking during this particular or yeah, sorry, the entire point of this initial image is to outline all the areas of movement. So regardless of when she or he is doing the movement, we want to outline all those areas so we know which to cut and prepare in Photoshop. So while you're thinking of what the character is going to be doing, you're then going to then highlight all the areas that would need to be cut out and worked on from there. All right. Character B, we'd obviously then just swap our colors over and use the green color here. And sorry, it's blue for character B. So just clicking here and selecting maybe a nice light blue, something like that. I can then draw over character B. And then when it comes to the secondary elements, so let's say his hair is bobbing back and forth or her curls are reacting to her movement, those will be secondary elements that you'll then highlight. Obviously highlighting them on the correct layer.
All right. So as you can see, as I've demonstrated, it's actually quite easy to like kind of just draw things on the incorrect layers. So please put in effort to get them on the right layers. They'll save you heartbreak later down the line. All right. Um, so you'll then use this image to highlight all the areas that need to be addressed. And I'm just going to undo this so that I can get that file back to the way that it was. Then lastly, we have our storyboard. Now, I've set up three pages. You might not necessarily need all three. So you'll see the layer says, turn off visibility if not needed. Now, the very first one will be needed, so please don't leave this one turned off. But how this has been set out is, I've now provided you with three thumbnails, essentially, of the image per page. And I've provided you an opportunity to type in dialogue, as well as a timestamp, and then action that corresponds with that dialogue. So let's say, for example, I now want to go in and edit this very first storyboard page. They're all duplicates, so they all have the exact same setup. Whatever you do to the first page, you'll just do to the other two as well. So you'll see that inside our page four, there are a bunch of red layers that I don't want you to mess with. So that's kind of just the structure of the page. Inside of this green layer, you'll see that there are a bunch of layers that can be interacted with. So we've got our dialogue lines, that's uh, these over here. So if I just click on these, you'll see that uh, those are our options and I can obviously just select the layers as well. So for example, if my character says, let's just go with something. So I'm just going to highlight this portion here and say something. She says that from zero frame, zero seconds and then her next line of dialogue is something else. And that takes place from two seconds and 10 frames. All right, let's say that that's all she does for that interaction. We're obviously now taking the dialogue that we transcribed in our dialogue breakdown. What we can then do is these areas that say delete if not necessary. I don't recommend deleting them. I recommend just turning their visibility off. So you just turn their layers off. That way you can come back and change them if necessary. And then what we would do for our action is we'll just type in here action description and principle used. So we might then say that she tilts her head clockwise. easing applied. All right, so that just tells me what she's doing during that action, as well as what uh, principle would be applied to that action. My second one here, while she's saying something else, that would then maybe be raises eyebrow. And that would be f part of uh, her expression. So if there's no clear, defined, or definite sort of principle, so if she's just raising her eyebrow while she says that thing, there's no real principle that is applied to that. So then you would just say NA for not applicable. Right, and then turn off the rest of those there. Then what I also want you to do, please, is this is your opportunity to actually highlight these very specific areas. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm also just gonna update this document so that there are some blank layers for you to draw on. So there'll be one blank layer per image. And what we're gonna do here is then you're gonna come on in. If she's character A, let's just check our key. Character A needs to be in red. So I hit B for brush, get my red color up front and use a small thing. And we'll then say, okay, cool. So she says something, her first action is tilt head clockwise. So we'll highlight her head, obviously a lot neater than this and perhaps draw an arrow to show me the direction that she's gonna tilt her head. Um, she's also then going to raise her eyebrow while she says her second line. So if that's the eyebrow that's going to be used, then just make it clear that that's what's going to happen. All right. Now, the entire purpose of this storyboard is to break down the actions into as many definable pieces as possible. So if, for example, the character has a very long amount of dialogue, let's just use this portion down here as an example. So if character B has a very large amount of action or uh, dialogue, he says a couple of sentences. 
if he's doing a couple of actions uh, while he's saying those sentences, then you're going to use each of these as an opportunity to note those specific actions. So you can either draw them out one action per image, which means that you'll be dealing with a lot of these pages, or you're going to number them. So you're going to just say, for example, here, let's say with her eyebrows, uh, action one is her head tilting, action two is her eyebrow moving. Um, what we could then do is, with our brush, maybe we just put like a one here and a two here, just to help identify, better see the actions that are taking place when and where. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So then let's say for example you only need two pages if you're able to encapsulate your storyboard in over two pages just turn off the visibility of the final page we don't need to worry about it if you need more pages if your storyboard is super detailed and you're more than welcome to make it super detailed i highly recommend it because the more planning you put in now the better so if you need more of these pages what you can do is let's just say we need to duplicate layer um, page six simply right click on that and select duplicate artboard all right so duplicate artboard will then create a new one we get a little panel opening up for our duplication i would then just change this to for example page seven just so i can help keep track of it i would say okay and uh, in my layers it seems to have now opened up some other panels so i'm just going to move my layer document up slightly i now have page seven Maybe just drop that layer down below page six and I could then carry on from there. All right. So now once we're done, once you're finished, once again, turned off any pages that we didn't need, kept the pages visible that we have content on. We want to export this as a PDF. All right. So in order to do this, first click off of your layers. I find that having one of the layers selected can actually mess up the exporting option. So just make sure that none of your pages are selected. Then what you're gonna do is we're gonna come on up to file and we're gonna go to export. And there's an option here called export artboards to PDF. So I want you to click on that and that opens up our panel over here. Now, first things first, change where it is um, setting it. So the destination, I'm just gonna set that to my desktop. What can sometimes happen is that you don't take into account where it's sending it and then you can't find it afterwards. So perhaps just set destination to your desktop for now. Um, file name prefix, uh, you can change this to your name. So for example, you could actually just type in here maybe your student number um, and add an underscore. So then it's labeled correctly with your student number and then the Renaissance animation template. Leave include overlapping options turned on leave the exclude background in export turned on. I want you to make sure that the multiple page document is selected. And then because Photoshop has the annoying habit of exporting from the, from the right to the left, I want you to please turn on the option reverse page order. And that just guarantees that the very first page in your PDF document will be your title page moving from left to right. Okay, you're then gonna say run. Now this can take some time, so don't stress out if this takes quite a while. Uh, you're gonna see it kind of flashing and popping and doing strange things to your layers. Don't worry about that at all. Just let it do its thing. Eventually it's gonna tell you that the process is finished. You'll then say okay, and then you'll find that PDF on your desktop. Please make sure to open that PDF so that you can check that it's exported properly. And if you have any issues, you can obviously get in touch so we can address them but please don't just submit it blindly. Actually read through and make sure that it's come out the way that you want it so that you didn't actually turn off any pages that you needed or anything like that. All right, so we'll let us do a thing. I'm gonna speed through and then I'll catch you at the end. So now it says artboards to PDF was successful and then it tells me where it's gone. So to my desktop essentially. Saying okay, I can then minimize my file. I'll find it on my page. Double clicking will open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader and I will then make sure that I'm happy with the way that this looks. 
Um, I just want to zoom out slightly and there my file exists. All right. Now, don't stress if in Adobe Acrobat Reader, the information kind of takes a while to load and sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's not. I don't know why this happens, but it does seem that Adobe kind of has like a strange way of interpreting the information that we have on a PDF. So don't freak out if you see it populating the information, right? You can see here that it hasn't finished loading that. It will eventually load it. Um, so don't let that stress you out too much. All right. So once you've then checked that your file is being uh, exported correctly, you can obviously then submit this uh, PDF file. And then I recommend in Photoshop just saving so that you can then go back and update it. Just to remind you guys, as we progress through our animation, you're going to be updating this document. So we'll take a look at this in uh, a later week where we start adding more artboards just to document any changes that we make to our file. And uh, we'll have this as a nice up-to-date document to submit at the end of the term. All right. So if you have any questions with this, please feel free to get in touch with either myself or Jade as we can then help you to progress forward. But we will be looking at these in class and uh, I'll be available then to also just help with any questions along the way. So with that, good luck. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao.